What's good, Mazillas? In front of me, I have the world's best interchiller. This isn't a killer chiller. This in front of me is forced inductions interchiller. So for those of you that don't know what an interchiller is, it's pretty much designed for water to air intercooler systems and it helps keep the intake temps below ambient. And with forced inductions interchiller, they can dip as low as 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And for those out of the US, that's zero degrees Celsius. What's going on guys? For those of you that don't know me, you guys can call me Zilla. If you'd like to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and follow my builds. And I'm on the quest to beat the stock turbo record. So I'd appreciate if everyone hits the like button. It helps others find my videos. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more content like this. So let's talk about what comes with the force induction inner chiller kit. So pretty much it's this, this massive interchiller. It comes with a race solenoid. So you can pretty much bypass car's factory evaporator. That way you get no dripping down the track. So it's racetrack safe. There's no condensation leaks. Uh, the temperatures dip way below ambient, which in turn that would give you that would yield you more horsepower. One of the major reasons why I purchased this kit over the killer chiller is because there's no performance loss with the cabin AC. And one of the main reasons why you have um, performance loss in the cabin is because the killer chiller system is too small. It gets overloaded and it doesn't have the capacity to cool both your both your coolant and your in-cabin temps. There's also a few things that make this kit a little better but I'm not gonna really go into that. I don't really want to bash on the other company's product but overall this inner chiller will protect the engine from pre-ignition. It will improve fuel consumption you can gain back ignition timing. With the inner chiller, you have the whole system warrantied. And there's pretty much dyno proven horsepower gains. And there is proof showing that you get no loss of uh, in cabin AC. I am pairing this system with AMS's, AMS's cooling tank and AMS's auxiliary tank. Now, normally I would not purchase these mods because to me, I don't really see it making that much of a difference, especially if you're just at the track because if you have more fluid, it's gonna take longer for it to cool down. But if you have a system like this and you want it to work efficiently, you'll want to add a little more coolant into the system. And the reason why is because the two most important factors to any heat exchanger system or inner chiller system is coolant flow rate and volume. The goal is if you're running a half mile to be passing the same temperature of fluid through the intercooler for the entire period of uh, the wide open throttle. And to achieve this, uh, one would need to work out the flow rate of the pump and then the size of the reservoir. So for example, you don't want the fluid to do two to three laps of the system because it would uh, reheat the fluid and it will get hotter and hotter. And you also want to be passing the fluid through the intercooler as fast as possible so the intercooler stays as cold as possible. So that's why I believe for the Red Sports, this is an amazing package because it has two intercooler pumps. Now AMS does offer another pump. So if you don't have the Red Sport that comes with two pumps, you can purchase the EMP pump and wire that up. So yeah, basically I'm gonna be testing out to see if the capacity of this and this tank with the heat exchanger deleted is gonna be enough to do possibly a half mile. I wanna have, I don't know if I'm gonna be going to a half mile, but I would like to, and I'd like the capabilities to do a half mile pass. So hopefully the capacity of what I have now is sufficient enough to keep the temperatures cool for the entire run. I'm gonna start testing out at the quarter mile track first to see if it's enough i might need i might not need that for the quarter mile but i might need it for the half mile so not enough coolant will heat up the fluid 
too fast and it will cool very quickly. Too much fluid, it will take longer for it to cool, but it would be cooler for a lot longer, for a longer period of time. So adding to the drag racing, the inner chiller is gonna work extremely well in drag racing. So typically you would be doing a burnout right before your staging and in those circumstances the intake temps normally rise and they, they're only going to get higher as you start driving down the track. The inner chiller is going to help because by the time you're staging and after you're doing your burnout, let's say the temps are normally around 50 degrees Fahrenheit which is 10 degrees Celsius. I'm going to be quoting uh, Force Induction's comment and they said that they have crossed the finish line with intake temps in the low 40 degrees Celsius or it's 100 degrees um, Fahrenheit compared to normally crossing around 176 to 194 degrees Fahrenheit and that's on an LSA blower. By the time I was at the stage and I did a burnout my temps were 125 at the time when I was staging and the ambient temp was like 92. So when I actually crossed the finish line with this car, my temps were, I think they were like 170, which is freaking hot. So it's a huge difference. Now, if you wanted to, let's say do circuit racing, which I'm not sure who would want to circuit race this big boat, but you would want to pretty much keep the heat exchanger because after a while, the heat exchanger is gonna help provide cooler ambient temperatures for longer duration. This system will not work for circuit racing without a heat exchanger. Now, if you wanted to keep the heat exchanger, you can also purchase a bypass valve. So pretty much it gives you the option to, you know, turn on or off access to your heat exchanger, but you'll be better off deleting the heat exchanger to make it a bit more simple. The intercooler fluid is so freezing cold that the front heat exchanger will no longer be cooling the coolant so it would pretty much just heat up the fluid instead of help aid the cooling process now i would say the only downside to this would be that it's adding quite a bit of weight to the vehicle but i am going to be squeezing out a little more ponies and it's going to allow me to make more consistent passes down the track Ho hopefully this is going to help me beat daily q50's stock turbo record uh, my tuner is going to be here by the end of september which is um, Hussein from Racebox. So hopefully I'll have everything installed. I have my date already set to get it tuned. And hopefully by October, I can start hitting the track. I already went to the track to test the stock tune and I hit a 12.4. And all I have literally are the AMS intakes, full down pipes and full exhaust. And I managed to get a 12.4 on a hot day straight off the highway. So I believe the car is running strong now with the new engine and new turbos and this should help me push out, push me out a little further onto the leaderboard. Anyway that is all for the inner chiller. If you'd like to see more content like this make sure to subscribe to my channel and follow my builds. Thank you again for watching guys and stay tuned for an updated video.